Welcome to the VIP Masterclass Series. I'm Josh Wright, and today's episode comes from Jeffrey, and he says, thanks for putting up such great VIP content. I am revisiting an old nemesis, Schumann's Symphonic Etudes. It would be great if you could do a pro practice on this body of work. Here are some more significant challenges um, for the VIP Masterclass Series. Etude number two, measure four. And I'm just gonna, I'll just get to these as he requests them. Um, I'll read them and then go through and play it and show you how to fix it. Um, but he asks basically four different questions about etude number two, three, six, and nine. And uh, to make this more applicable to everybody, I wanted to relate Jeffrey's questions to Schumann's works in general because I feel like Schumann has so many great masterpieces out there. I've played the G minor sonata. He has Chrysleriana, which is unbelievable. I love his concerto, and I also love his shorter works like Kinderzainen and Fantasy Stuck. They're just wonderful um, treasures in the piano repertoire. But Schumann also is kind of a curious composer, and he has a lot of idiosyncrasies in his music that we can talk about today and um, relate them to Jeffrey's questions. So the four things that I want to cover today is large chords, how you can redistribute them, when you can redistribute, etc. Um, that actually comes up quite often in Schumann's music. Uh, the second is singing lines. Um, Jeffrey asks about how to make things sound um, like a cello in one of the etudes, and uh, it certainly um, is a great question because the more we think orchestrally, the more uh, our music will sound full of variety and full of imagination. And that's something you can apply to really any composer, but it also applies to Schumann's music. Uh, one of the most um, distinct qualities of Schumann's music is his manipulation of rhythm and rhythmic displacement so far as where the downbeat is. He asks a question about that, and that's seen all over the place in Schumann. It's very hard to predict where the beat is as a listener, and that's part of the cunning and um, devilish quality of Schumann's music. And finally, um, You'll also see this all the time in Schumann's music is fast chords, how to get, gain speed and accuracy on fast chords. And I'll demonstrate with uh, a passage from this, uh, from Etude 9, actually. So, um, Jeffrey first asks in Etude 4, or sorry, Etude number 2, measure 4, the five note left hand chords and massive right hand intervals are such a struggle. Any advice here would be great. Should I just omit some of the notes I cannot play easily? I've heard of redistributing notes, but I'm not sure what that means. Redistributing means putting certain notes from one hand into the other. And I think absolutely in this case, it's going to be okay to drop a few notes and to redistribute some notes. Let me just give some general advice to all of you um, about when you should distrib redistribute and when you shouldn't. You shouldn't redistribute when it's an etude um, in a specific with a specific goal. So you would not redistribute the Chopin double thirds etude first line. You would not play it like that. You've gotta play. Oh, I totally suck at it right now, but. Even though it sounds a touch better with two hands, you can't redistribute there. But basically everywhere else, in my opinion, is free game because you always have to serve the sound first. A lot of people get caught up with their editor's fingering as well. They say, oh, my editor put a four here. I've got to use it even though it sounds terrible. No, use what sounds best. Always serve the sound first. Um, how to know when you can drop notes in large chords uh, or when you should roll them. In this example, we're going to drop notes because there are doubles in there. And what I mean by that, let me play a little bit of this. Um, I'm going to start just right in bar... Uh, four here. Um, I'm gonna go slow. I've never played this. I just took a listen to it before this. I've heard it performed before. It's a brilliant piece, but I'm just gonna go slow t to not torture you guys. Right here. I can actually reach it, but barely, and I don't know if I trust myself. So rather than playing the E sharp, G sharp, G sharp, which is humongous, I would just play the octave G sharps. And then I'd go back down for these chords. Here, there's no way I can reach. And listen how crappy it sounds if I roll it. it just sounds like dum bum bum. It totally disrupts the rhythm there. The reason why we are going to drop that note doesn't sound that bad. Same thing here, sorry. So 
such a great piece. Anyways, um, when you're playing repeated notes and you can't reach one of those because you have to go up, it's probably okay. Now, if you're doing a gorgeous little line that's progressing and you leave out a note, that's not going to really <laughs> fly. You're probably going to want to roll it at that point. So like, roll it like. But in this case, I just don't think it's worth it. Because they're repeating. So that answers that question. Thank you so much for watching. I've listed two links in the description below. One of them is to download this full video that you've just watched the sample for. The other is to view the entire library of VIP Masterclass series videos. I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.